M1 Global presents. Представляем ваше внимание главное событие сегодняшней битвы в сердце континента. Пятираундовый бой за титул чемпиона M1 Challenge в полутяжелом весе. Стоит биться с Виктором Немковым. Немков хороший боец, очень опытный боец. Можно сказать, один из лучших бойцов России, полутяже России. Дрался с многими хорошими бойцами. А Виктор, он, я думаю, он универсальный боец, он чувствует себя хорошо как и в стойке, так и в партере. Функционально очень хорошо подготовлен. Зная это, я готовился к этому, готовился с пятирандового боя. Много боролся, много работали в стойке, но я думаю, я готов. Всем известно наше противостояние со Штефаном Пюсом. В крайнем бою мало кто верил в мою победу, но я все-таки одержал победу. Вот. И сейчас предстоит защита пояса. Защита даже в какой-то мере сложнее, чем просто забрать пояс. Соперник у меня из э, знаменитого именитого клуба «Горец». Очень опасные стойки и борется неплохо. Чемпион мира по смешанным единоборствам, по любителям. Хотя у него мало профессиональных боев, но у него очень... Большой опыт в смешанных единоборствах. Поэтому я думаю, что бой будет очень тяжелый, равный. Ну, я думаю, что запомнится зрителям надолго. Пояс мне достался очень тяжело, поэтому я не собираюсь терять его при первой защите. Тренировочный процесс у нас проходил в Старом Осколе. Большой упор сделали на функциональную подготовку и на работу против левши. Так как соперник на левша, поэтому в ударной технике много времени уделяли работы против левши. Я хочу забрать это пояс и удержать его как можно дольше. Витя, Кубигорец уже есть один пояс. Надеюсь, в бой два. Рашид, пояс останется у меня. И точка. Спортсмен в синем гуринга представляет клуб Горец Республика Дагестан. Встречайте, Рашид Ю! Супав! Потому что я горец. 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 Потому что я горец.
Дамы и господа, в красном углу ринга действующий чемпион M1 Challenge в полутяжелом весе. Спортсмен представляет клуб Александр Невский ОМК, город Старый Оскол. Встречайте, Виктор Немко! Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is for the M1 Challenge light heavyweight title. Now introducing your challenger in the blue corner. This fighter is 23 years old. He weighed in at 92.7 kilograms. He stands 185 centimeters tall and has an unbeaten record of seven wins with no losses. He is national MMA champion, European MMA champion, World MMA Champion and International Master of Sports in MMA from Goretz Team Dagestan. Please welcome Rashid Yusupov. <laughs> and now your fighter in the red corner. This fighter is 28 years old. He weighed in at 93 kilograms. He stands 185 centimeters tall and has an impressive record of 25 wins and two losses. He is the winner of the World Combat Sambo Cup, winner of the first season of L1 Fighter Reality Show. He is the current L1 Challenge Light Heavyweight Champion from Alexander Nevsky, Russia, Viktor Nevkov. And your referee for this bout, Marco Bruison. Red corner, blue corner, center of the right. Championship bout, five rounds, five minutes. You both know the rules. Listen to my command. Protect yourself all the time. Make it a good hand. Shake hands. Go back to your corner. Time ready, contender ready, champion ready. Hey! Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Our main event of the evening in the blue corner, Rashid Yusupov in the red corner, the light heavyweight champion, Viktor Nemkov. Well, as we said on VT, Yusupov, I think, will have to take this down to the ground, keep his opponent there, submit 
or ground and pound them because I just think Nemkov's going to be too good at standing. And like you see, he's been learning the grappling. With the greats. Yeah, with the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> the grappling throws, the takedown defense, the takedowns himself. You have to learn how to do it to know how to avoid it. Indeed. And I mean, Fedor is watching over this fight right now. He's sitting like right in ringside right now. Oh. I like it. Nemkov's already a little more aggressive than he was against Put. Well, Yusupov's asked to be coming into this fight with a little bit of confidence just because of his record alone, 7 and 0. Well, it's, it's an impressive record, and he also trains with the renowned Goritz fight team in Dagestan. As you saw, he got a hero's welcome as he came out, the entire team, because there were a lot of them were on the amateur championships, the entire team, team came out chanting his name and cheering him on. So that's got to be a big boost for him as well. And that's, that's also where M1's middleweight champion trains as well, Ramazan Emim. <laughs> Slight tentative start, but Nemkov in the lead and he's pushing the pace. Well, they'll not be, be pushing it too hard, to be honest. They've got five rounds. You know, it, it, if you study your opponent and fail that, they weaken in the first round. You know, it takes them two, three rounds to get warmed up, then go hard and heavy. But, you know, both these guys know that the seasoned veterans, they're not going to rush anything too quick. Yusupov's gym is also where their former coach the soul of the team, as they referred to him, was gunned down in the assassination. The team apparently has never been the same ever since, but they still have a middleweight champion in M1 and a light heavyweight title contender. So I think the team's doing just fine. Oh, nice left hand. Nice left straight there by Yusupov. Both both fighters actually started their, out their careers under M1 Global's banner. So it's very interesting to see them converge at this point in their career. Both of them being born and bred out of the, the M1 Global promotion. Yusupov's doing very good in the exchanges right now. You know what, I was just about to say, I'm, I'm surprised that it's been on its feet this long. Because we know Nemkov's well known for his striking ability. You know, Yusupov must be really comfortable. I thought he would have went for the takedown. Try to get on top of Nemkov and finish the fight from there. But he might be lulling him into a false sense of security, but you know, three minutes gone in the fight, I think he's quite happy to stand. Well, the Goritz team in Dagestan is not one that tends to entirely focus on grappling or the, the, the grappling arts in general, wrestling or whatnot, like most of the other Dagestani teams do. It's quite, it's quite the thing that actually differentiates them a lot. They tend to use that wrestling base to create a striking advantage where they know they can't be taken down, they know they're comfortable on the ground, but they prefer to strike with their unsuspecting opponents. Oh, nice left hand again. It's a sort of approach you tend to get out of Amiv a lot, and I'm wondering if that's what we're going to see out of Yusupov tonight. Victor Nemkov, on the other hand, has been all over the place. Uh, he's compiled several key wins, including one over UFC signee Abdukarim Edelov and former M1 light heavyweight champion Stefan Putz, who just fought in our co-main event. It was a 12-1 record and the loss is to Vinny Makales for the light heavyweight title in M1 back in 2011. A lot has changed over those five years, Ian, a lot. Well, we've got under one minute, and it looks like Yusupov is slowly but surely winning this round. You know, it, it, more so the fact that he's hit his target more than what, what Nemkov is. Certainly seems so. Wonder if the judges agree with us. <laughs> A little bit of blood on the right kneecap there, if you notice, on the side of the kneecap. Interesting to see it now, yeah. It's dripping down. To be honest, he could have had like a, a mat burn or something there with a bit of scab, and it's come, it's come off because it's an unusual place. Normally you get it on the shin if you clash shins, but... Yeah. You know, it's interesting. We've seen quite a few fighters with, the, with that carpet burn from, from the ring today. Don't regularly see that. Or at least I haven't noticed regularly. Oh, went for the spinning kick. Oh! Just a little too late. I don't think it was enough to lose the round. I think he just pipped it. His striking just seemed a little bit more clinically crisp. Yusupov's, yes. 
Victor Nemkov's training in the Stario school, but with Fedor's team obviously there and Fedor's renowned coach Vladimir Voronov. But it's very interesting to know that Voronov actually isn't in his corner tonight, which is quite rare. You see him at M1 events quite regularly. Yet here we are tonight and, and different coaches talking to Nemkov. I wonder if that's going to have any impact on his psyche at all. Some specific fighters like having certain people in their corner regularly, but that doesn't happen in my effect mentally. I don't know if you agree with me there, Ian. I do agree with you, yeah. And sometimes all it takes is one little bit of advice, the correct advice. It may only be a small thing, but in between rounds, you get that one little bit of advice which could change the whole fight around. I also feel that there are certain fighters who, who only respect and listen to very key people in their life, that, they, that things go through to them more when they hear it from a very specific person. And if that's their sort of their uh, father-like coach figure, like Vladimir Voronov is, then I think that that would be very key to have this corner. But anyway, we'll see how this plays out over the following up to four rounds. Oh, nice knee to the body. Yusupov threw a lovely knee. Nemkov shot in, ended up going to his knees and followed up with a knee. I don't know if it's wrong for me to say, but Yusupov just looks that little bit sharper than Nemkov right now. He really does. I'll have to agree with you there, Ian. I don't like that he's consistently moving backwards, though. I'd like to see him go forward against Nemkov. Because see, but Nemkov's capable of backing him up. But it seems he's got the awareness to not get caught in the corner. And I'd like to see Victor Nemkov actually take advantage of him pushing forward. Because he's going forward and then we're getting we're seeing nothing out of it really. We're seeing no kicks, we're seeing no jabs, we're seeing nothing. What Yusupov is doing when he steps back half a step, two steps, he then fires a right hand, so he's a left hand because he's left handed. You know, he steps back one, one or two steps, sees Nemkov coming forward, left hand down the pipe. He's done that about three or four times in this round already. I think that's having any impact on Nemkov. I wonder if he's uh, slightly confused fighting a left handed person. It can, it can put you off. Oh! Well, that hit the mark. His oh, coach is nice asking for him to go for the kill now. Nemkov still seems awake. Oh, nice liver kick. Good catch, though. Well, Yusupov, he might have went in for the kill for a short time, but I think it was very clever not to go in for the kill too much, because sometimes fighters can go over the top, get a little bit too excited and get caught in something. It's a dangerous move up against a fight like Nemkov. Surprisingly, and the crowd seems to be in Rashid's favor. They're chanting Rashid's name right now. Oh, slip. Yeah, it's that left hand every time them cross takes half a step forward. He's releasing that right left hand. Ooh, I was just about to say that looked very close. Obviously, Southpaw versus Orthodox. The left hand is Southpaw's main advantage, and vice versa, the right hand. Is the orthodox being advantage? So that that is something they have worked on because every time you step back, it's as if I'm going to step back two steps, possibly three. As soon as I see them cross these doors, I'm going to fire. He's definitely taking that counter strike approach. Honestly, working out for him. We truly believe, or at least like what we spoke about earlier, was that it would require the grappling element of the game. And uh, to be honest, I, I, not that I, I, I don't think Yusupov has a, a striking background because obviously he's proven he has. I just didn't think he did as good as Nemkov. But it, he, he proved me wrong, and I, that's why I thought the fight was going to go to the ground. And I honestly think Nemkov didn't see this coming as well because, as he said, as he told me earlier, he, he trained specifically on his conditioning for five rounds and his grappling. That's not to say he didn't do any striking whatsoever, but that's to say that it maybe he was expecting the takedown. Exactly. Yeah. 
Big miss there, Nemkov trying to take advantage. Up against the ropes. They're gonna go for a trip. Just peppering him slightly. Some to the knee as well. See, as we were talking about earlier, when, you, when your back is up against the ropes like that, it, it's not as easy to work off it, because when you've got a cage or fencing, you know, you've got more of a base to push off. I'll admit the ring ropes particularly, or the ring versus cage debate, I think the, the ring's weakest element, in my opinion, is this sort of oh, position. Oh, nice takedown. Oh, oh, that's, oh that's, that's good that knee, too. Body. That knee hurt him. He doubled up there. You two good ball. rounds there. They're shocking everyone. You know, there's no obviously with the record of seven and all the people saying that he's going to get beat, but I didn't think he was going to dominate like this. Dagestan, Goritz fight team, looking to have their second champion. Active fighter right now too on the M1 roster. Two champions at the same time on the M1 roster. That would be quite an achievement for a team that supposedly lost its soul when their former coach was assassinated. It's a sad story, but it's fantastic to see them pushing, and regenerating. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Because many believe that that was, that was the end of the team, that there was nothing left and that the team would disperse into different Dagestani, that different Dagestani fighters would disperse across different teams and would move around, etc. etc. But believe it or not, they stuck together like glue. If anything, they're stronger now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It certainly has. It's a brotherhood they have. I've spoken to Ramazan Yemiv about it. He has a very hard time speaking about the subject. They were all very close to, to, to the coach. They saw him as a father figure in many ways. And it's just very difficult to see. And I'm sure Rashid Yusuf was thinking about him as he fights Viktor Nemkov right now. Well, we're into the third of possible five. My goodness, you can hear a pin drop now. Very different to the way this arena was a few minutes ago. Whoa. Or all night, really. What I've noticed as well, I was Nemkov. Very nice kick there. Watching Nemkov, you see if he would, he's moving forward. But as soon as Yusupov goes on his back foot, he's not chasing him down because he knows that left hand is coming. Did I catch that correctly, or was that kick by Yusuf an oblique kick, sort of like John Jones' attack, that controversial attack? Or can was I, it. Can I be honest with you? Sure. I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it. It looked to me. Oh, why? Oh, very nice! And now he's actually backing Nemkov up for the first time in the fight. He's really backing Nemkov up. Yeah, I do apologize. I missed that kick. The cameraman who was in front of us now stepped to the corner of the ring. And it just as it happened, I heard you shout, so I missed the kick. It definitely looked like that John Jones oblique style kick uh, to the knee. And if that was the case, we've never seen it in an M1 fight or At least I haven't seen it so far. It would be a very, very like, powerful weapon to integrate to a lot of these fighters' arsenals. Even though many see it as controversial, mind you. Oh, we've got a fight on our hands here, Ian. If Nemcom loses this round, there's a very good chance he knows he has to go for a finish. Nekov's not thrown as many punches as he normally does. Oh, this is... Yeah, he's, he's, he's hesitant, isn't he? In contrast to his matchup against Putz a few months ago, this is startling, this is startling really, to be honest. It's a shocking performance. It's very different to what we saw. Nemkov is not the smiliest or most talkative of fighters either, so it's very difficult to get a sense of his, uh, his psyche and his 
his appearance and whatnot. You know, we determine anything, we can judge him based off an appearance we see him during fights. We can really doesn't tell you anything about how his weight cut's going or his preparation's going. He's quite stone-faced all the time, generally. The face you're seeing right now in the cage is the exact same face you'll see at lunchtime the day before, and the same face you'll see tomorrow morning. Oh, that hurt his knee. He caught him just right there. See him limp a little bit once he got kicked. Yep. He needs to go for some more of those inside leg kicks. Ooh. He is applying that kick. Oh, he's trying to. Interesting feeling out for us is here in the third round. Sort of reevaluating each other, really. Well, you should both come forward now. Exactly. He's got a beautiful left straight hand, hasn't he? Nemkov is remarkably inaccurate tonight with his striking. Even when he finally does throw punches, he's not landing as well as he usually does. But as you were saying, you suppose right or left, sorry, is a thing of beauty. Very impressive, Sean. Turn into a little bit of a boxing match with the odd kick here and there. 30 seconds left to go. Three of five. Well, I'm glad I don't have to be a judge in this fight, Ian. It is very <laughs> close, it's very close. You think that, you know, with 30 seconds left to go, 15 seconds left to go now, you know, one would attempt a takedown. Either one solidify the round with that takedown, but there's a nice left hand again. Spit flying, blood trickling, we're seeing it all here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. End of the third round there. My oh my, it's very difficult to tell if Yusupov's got a firm lead or if Nemkov's creeping back into it. Well, Yusupov did seem to come forward that little bit more in the, the end of the Certainly did, third. certainly did. Well, we're just a few seconds away from the championship round. The fight's definitely gone very different to what we expected here. Totally different to what we expected. That's uh, the beauty of MMA sometimes, my, isn't it? My, my visualization is with them coming forward, catching Yusupov with strikes, Yusupov get the takedown, and obviously, yeah, Nemkov would have to learn what he long with feet or to get back to his feet. The stone faced Fedor is watching on, very cool, calm, and collected sitting ringside as the president of the Russian Union of MMA. And since there were amateur championships as the undercard for this M1 Challenge 66 event, Fedor naturally had to be in attendance for the show. And his teammate, the main event definitely was a cherry on top for him. Well, like you said, championship round, round four here. Nemkov truly feel he's down slightly. Not a lot, but he's down slightly. Is that the kick you were talking about? That is the kick I was yeah, well, talking that's about. Side, that's a side kick, a turning kick. The oblique kick is when you turn your feet the opposite way around. And you're sort of, you're, you're, you're thrown with the heel. I see. And that can actually knock your knee twisted outwards, forwards. <laughs> yeah, that was the clearest I actually got to see the kick there when he threw it this time around. Some people call it a stomach kick, a side kick. If you turn your foot to the outside, when your toes are on the outside, and you kick with your heel, some people call it the oblique. Well, it's a beautiful left hand. I think he just lost his balance slightly. I'd like to see Yusupov keep up the pace. You never know what happens when it comes to judging these fights. 
Oh, nice shot. Ooh, good scroll. Do you know what I love? Every time that Nemkov has shot, Yusupov has threw the knee on his wheel. Every time. Solid warning and a reminder. Every time you come in, I'm going to hurt, hurt you. you. Yeah, of course. Beautiful timing. I'm not out striking him, I can't grapple with him, I can't take him down. It's quite a dilemma with the heavyweight champions in right now. Seemingly behind on the scorecard and in the championship round. Well, both corners are going crazy, the both shout advice. But the fight is carbon copy of all the rounds we've had. Nice left hand again. It still amazes me that Nemkov has not been able to utilize his ground game in any way whatsoever. I mean, he's master of sports in judo. <laughs> he hasn't been able to apply the trips or the throws or anything whatsoever. It's a very impressive show from Yusupov, it should be noted. He's also a combat sample bronze medalist. He should be more than capable of working his way through these situations. And then again, those are all dates of the wards, going back nearly 10 years now. We've seen wrestlers turn to striking, we've seen strikers turn to grappling. Over time in their careers, Yusuf Bob has a super fast left hand. He could just fire it on a dime. It's like as soon as Nemkov steps forward, boom! You've got to understand, th th these are light heavyweights. These, you know, they're probably just weighing in now over the light heavyweight division you know, of 93 kilos. That's what they weigh in at. Something. There's something on the ground, but yeah, I, I don't it. think the referee noticed it. Looks like tape or something. Yeah. Nemkov had to get it off him, that's why the fight was stopped momentarily. We got one minute left in the fourth round, Ian. We're no closer to determining who the winner is just yet. If I was a gambling man, I would say Yusupov. He's just... He's out striking, not, not in, in abundance. It's not you know, more, more power shots against power shots. It's more for the fact that he's connecting more. Nice shot, beautiful. Oh, that could have pinched that. What did I see at the end of the third round? Indeed. Why isn't one of them going for the takedown to solidify the round? And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Smart strategy at the exact right time. Well done. <laughs> when the striking is so close for four and a half minutes, in which it is, it's so close. Get the round with the takedown. Three seconds to go. Solid finish in the round for Nemkov. Final round to go. I've never seen a fighter enjoy having water poured on him as much as Namco yeah, just did. He closed his eyes. <laughs> it was like heaven, wasn't it? Sitting under a waterfall is what it seemed like there. <laughs> There's that left hand. And like I said, it's not so much the amount of times he's thrown it, it's how clinically he throws it. You know, it, it hits its mark all the time. Oh, that's an impressive shot, definitely. Yeah, beautiful takedown. That was the pivotal moment right there in the fourth round. Pivotal moment. 
And what the camera missed over the, while whilst they were showing the replays there was the Gorets coach standing and giving precise instructions about how to strike for the fifth and final round. That's what I'd like to see more of. Instead of coaches telling you, you can do this, change the position, actually give actual feedback and advice that will legitimately help your fighter progress. Well, both guys have come alive. They're both bouncing on their feet. It means a lot to them. And obviously the belt means a lot to Nemkov. He wants to keep it. But he's got to do more than bounce. Indeed. What I have liked about watching Rashid Yusupov is he doesn't look phased at all. Oh, nice. He does not look phased at all. At all. This is a big moment for him. Big moment for his team, big moment for all of them. Yet he's handling it like a pro. Indeed, now it's so clear to me that it's a sidekick. <laughs> He's catching that kick more now. Did you see did you see the escape from that kick? He caught the kick and as it was in the air, Yusupov front peeped him to get away from it. Well when these two guys wake up in the morning, Nemkov is gonna look in the mirror and see he's been in a fight. Yusupov on the other hand. Does a look at this one mark on his face. Really looks like he's taking part in a sparring session at this point. Then again, that sort of damage isn't everything, but at the same time. No, but what I mean is, it's, it's going back to my thing about the, the accuracy of what Mr. Pop has had. Half a round to go. And both fighters taking turns, throwing exchanges at each other. I just wonder if Nemkov is going to go hell for leather in the last minute. Well, I was literally just about to ask you hey, what needs to happen right now in these final two minutes, or less than two minutes now, especially for the defending champion. Well, the thing is, if you if you go too hard and too heavy too early in the round, you gas yourself out with your feet. When there's a minute left, 45 seconds, go hell for leather, but obviously professionally. Oh, nice takedown. Oh, oh. Great scramble. Yeah, but I was saying, go for it. And then obviously, win the round on the eyes of the judges. Because we know that Nemkov's definitely won one round for that takedown that he had. I'd like to think. It could be as far as level terms here, 2-2 heading into this final round. than a minute to go in this fight, ladies and gentlemen, our main event of the evening for the light heavyweight title. Rashid Yusupov putting up a bigger fight than many of us expected here. So much so that this is within his grasp. But he's just looked up at the clock, Yusupov. He knows there's only 30 seconds left to go now. Do or die now. I think both guys are going to stand the ground and go for it.
down to the final 10 seconds. The light heavyweight title is on the line. There's a takedown and he gets it. That could just clinch him the title. Wow. He gets up with a roar of celebration. Knows he put up a great performance. Whilst Viktor Nemkov takes his time getting up. Contemplating how the past five rounds went. We certainly don't know what happened, ladies and gentlemen. We don't know the decision just yet. I'll lead it to Ian to determine who has won this fight momentarily. Для награждения спортсменов в ринг приглашается президент Федерации ММА Оренбуржья Виктор Фролов. Президент Лиги М1 Глобал Вадим Финкельштейн. И легенда смешанных боевых единоборств мира Александр Шторм Шлеменко. Друзья, мы приветствуем, аплодируем, ждем решения судейской команды. Но перед этим, пользуясь случаем, позвольте еще раз напомнить, что грандиозные события всех нас ждет в Санкт-Петербурге 16 июня. Александр Шлеменко сразится с Вячеславом Василевским. Саш, в предыдущем бою в Москве, по-моему, что-то недосказано, нет? У меня нету. Я все сказал тем боем. Единственное, что меня расстраивает, конечно же, хотелось встретиться в финале с настоящим финалистом. Ну, пускай будет Вячеслав. То есть ты считаешь, что Вячеслав не достоин дать настоящую рубку, настоящий бой? Но он проиграл в полуфинале, и он уходит в финал. Это подарок судьбы для него. Это действительно так. Но мы все поклонники смешанных боевых единоборств ждем с нетерпением этой схватки. Победит сильнейший! А сегодня мы болеем за Александра Шлеменко! И его потрясающую команду. Я думаю, 16-го тоже мы будем болеть за меня. Спасибо всем. А сейчас, дорогие друзья, мы узнаем, кто же стал победителем в этом бою. Спортсмены на центр. Рашид, Виктор, Ян Фриман. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard for a split decision in favor of your winner and the new M1 Challenge light heavyweight champion, Rashid Yusupov. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Just like Ian and I were saying, it was very, very close to crowning a new champion. And via split decision, the judges have determined that Rashid Yusupov is indeed M1 Global's new light heavyweight champion. Thank you very much for tuning in to M1 Challenge 66. We'll see you next week in Baku, Azerbaijan for M1 Challenge 67. Я уже второй раз в Оренбурге и второй раз побеждаю. Я уже люблю этот город. Большое спасибо. Хочу поблагодарить всех моих тренеров, которые подготовили меня. Спасибо, кто полечил мое колено, это Тимур. Спасибо мою за функциональную подготовку. Анзор, Гамзат, Гумцентр, Баркал Мурат, директор Кинайта России, который оказывает поддержку нам. Спасибо. Большую благодарность хочу выразить. Моим тренерам это Сухлав Магомеду Мушарим, Шамилю Алибатыру, Магомеду Магомеду, Рамазанову Магомеду. Всем большое баркало. И все братья, которые здесь собрались. И всем моим спарик партнерам которые поддерживали меня. Всем ассалам алейкум. Рашид Юсубов, Гурец, Дагестан, Россия. Ну а мы, дорогие друзья, спешим вам.